Welcome, everybody. This is a humorous history podcast. We are the Goofy Historians. Today, we're going to talk about the age of exploration, and we're going to focus on three folks that everybody knows. Um, they're well-known characters. The Christopher Columbus, Ferdinand Magellan, and Henry Hudson. Um, these guys had a, a lot in common. Um, let me give you some dry details first, and then we'll jump right into the juicy stuff. So that kind of covers the entire 16th century here because um, Columbus was born in 1451, Magellan was born in 1480, and Henry Hudson was born in 1565. So they all, their work was all done in, through the 16th century. Christopher Columbus died in 1506 at 55 in Spain. Magellan died in 1521 in the Philippines at age 41, he never made it back. And Henry Hudson died in 1611 at the age of 46, somewhere in the Atlantic. Um, these guys had a lot in common. They, they all kept going when it was pretty much time to stop. Um, like, we, like I just said, Magellan and Hudson died during their voyages voyages and they just have a lot of stuff named after them just an incredible amount of stuff um they all experienced just unbelievable hardships and they all had crews that at one point or, or another just said this is enough we've we've just had enough but what I want to say up front is because it, it turns out that we're going to talk about an hour on these guys and we're going to talk about how big of jerks they were and how they were bad at this and bad at that. And But what I want to say up front is that these guys were amazing. They were amazing. They were the most badass, smart guys of their time. They were world-class navigators and they were brave beyond reason imagine sailing just into the unknown you know how how brave do you have to be just to do that and get other people to follow you and imagine a dark clear night and the stars that's all you have and they're your friends they're they are they're your navigation tools so before we say too much about what kind of jerks they were i just want to throw that out there because these guys were freaking amazing and they're heroes of mine and as a somebody of portuguese descent i i like to think that my ancestors were some of these people that got on freaking boats and just went across the ocean you know one time i was i've only been on a boat crossing the ocean one time not the ocean it was actually the english channel but it was a rough sea and uh, at the beginning I was like, yeah, this is great. I, I, my ancestors were sailors. And by the end of that 20 minute little uh, journey across the channel, I was so sick. I didn't know which way the front or the back of the boat was. So you could imagine, <laughs> it was rough seas that day in the channel, but you could imagine what it was like going across the ocean. All right. I just wanted to say that before we start bashing these guys. Yeah, and I have to put something in too. Yeah, yeah go you ahead. do have you do you do have Portuguese, but remember, the other half of you is Slav. So <laughs> that's, right, we're that's, slave. that's gonna come up again too. So maybe it was the Slav part of your blood that was having difficulty across the English Channel, <laughs> and not not the Portuguese part of you. <laughs> I was so sick. So you I should have like... some some uh, conflicting emotions there. Oh my god. <laughs> So to to to, to can, can I give a two yeah go background? ahead get started on yeah. this okay so I mean so what happened is it's like yeah these people are brave but you're not like brave for no reason at all right they and they're all jerks but they're all jerks in different ways which is important and I think the true the three we picked are actually representative of the three different schools of being a jerk that you're going to find in these explorers but what happened was. For three centuries, ever since the Mongolians, 
the Silk Road was open to China. That means for three years, Europeans could get to China. And what happened, the Europeans got addicted to nutmeg and all of the spice. They got addicted to spices, Not right? tea, yeah. What is a spice? There's like hundreds of different spices they were yeah. getting through. And besides silk, they were getting silk and they were getting nutmeg and cloves. <laughs> and apparently Europe didn't have any peppers or any spices but salt. So there was a real addiction to the spices that they couldn't get themselves, in addition to the ceramics and the silk. In 1453, the Muslims shut that down. It was shut down like overnight. Right? When Constantinople fell? When Constantinople fell, you know, when they took over Eastern Europe and they shut down the settlers because they were, they were pissed at the Christians because of the Crusades. I mean, understandably. Yeah, know? so it started out the Crusades, the Hundred Years War, Constantinople fell. And then, and, they, and, then, and, and then the Silk Road's cut off. The Silk Road's <laughs> cut off. And and, and Europeans got, are like white guys that cannot sit in a room by themselves quietly. They've got to go. And, and they were going. Every and it's be, Well, but they didn't do it before, right? I mean, the reason that they're going through nutmeg withdrawal, right? They got to get their nutmeg, right? So they got to find another way. So the emphasis went from Venice, who was the with the, the linchpin for the Silk Road, right? To Portugal, who's on the other side of Europe, they're going west to get east or going around Africa. So that whole thing started up and that's why this whole age of exploration started. If the Muslims kept the Silk Road open, maybe they'd all still be in Europe, uh, you know, getting down a nutmeg without screwing up the rest of the world. But they, Did they didn't, so that's, that's what happened. Did the English so that was the, become the, the whole point was to get was to get to the Spice Islands. Understood. That was their reason. Did did the English become addicted to tea later, or was that already happening? Because that was already they, happened too through China, right? They were getting yeah. yeah. It's another thing. There was there was there was that's so tea crazy from because China. if you it's think like, about it today, they still love tea. In <laughs> It's like it's like the the poor Asians are going. Can't you make your own tea? Why do you need our tea? <laughs> Why do you need our nutmeg? Can't you make your own nutmeg <laughs> to put on your hot chocolate? And then after, but anyway, so it so it started out this age of exploration, right? And that was so Portugal actually became the total Silicon Valley of 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 the 1500s, right? Instead of software, it was exploration. There was this whole one person started and it sort of just became this this uh, corporate enterprise to try to find the fastest and quickest road to Asia. And it became a thing in itself almost. Everybody's like trying to get their names. Like Columbus would have been the, the Jobs, you know, and then Magellan would have been uh, the, the Steve. Uh, Bill Gates or somebody. Bill Gates, the Bill Gates. Right, and, 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 and then Magellan after them and all those people. They, they were all big names at that time, just as Silicon Valley heroes or high-tech heroes are of today. So it started, and that's what uh, started the exploration. And also something sort of tied into today is I remember they were trying to get east, but no one had ever gone west to get east before, besides maybe the Vikings very much earlier. Well, no, and actually, there it. was a there was a Venetian sailor in the 1300s who who tried to do exactly what Columbus did, and he sailed off and he never came back. And no, I, no, I never heard from him again. No, yeah, he, yeah. I, I'd like to think that he actually made it. That would be a great alternate history novel where he does make it and he creates a civilization, and then when the Europeans get there, he's like, nope. Yeah, you remember, I mean, they, they, they're sailing into the Atlantic and the sailing Atlantic at that time still had a hurricane season, right? So Columbus was lucky just to get in between two hurricanes and probably the first one who went just got messed up in the middle of them. Uh, and even the Irish tried to, 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 to sail out and no one, no one ever heard from them again either. But and the Vikings did it, but remember the Vikings did it secretly. They didn't want to tell anybody. That's the last thing they wanted was other yeah. people to follow him. They, they were trying to get a little colony without all the other Vikings showing up. I think so the, this is the I first time- the Native uh, Americans uh, did, did away with those early Vikings. All right, so yeah. let's talk about Columbus first. We gotta try to go in chronological order, maybe, I don't know. Columbus's boat, well, there's three boats, but his specific one was 41 feet long. 
The Santa Maria was the biggest one. It was 56 feet long. Think about that. A semi-trailer, you know, a truck going down the freeway, 70 to 80 feet. Yeah, and how many His trailers His boat was half have? the size of a truck. That's nuts. <laughs> it took him 36 days, Columbus, on his first trip. That's not bad, really. But 36 days of thinking you might not be able to make it back was terrifying for most of them. Magellan's boat was bigger. I want to say something about Magellan right off the bat. I guess we're not going to go in order. Let's just mix these guys up. Magellan didn't circumnavigate anything. Well, I don't know why we keep saying that, but he didn't. He he died in the Philippines by getting involved in, you know, local politics. But his boat was bigger, it was 70 feet. It took him actually days on the sea to get for his people to get all the way around the world was only a hundred days. Um, Hudson's boat was actually a little bit smaller than Magellan's, even though he was way later. It was less than a hundred feet. So if you think about these boats, geez, Louise, how could, yeah. they, how could they miss, how could, forget a hurricane, Yeah, <laughs> rough weather. But I mean, but, I mean, the, I mean the, the Chinese tried a age of exploration, but cut it off after one major expedition, you know, a series of ships, but their ships were huge. But what they weren't is navigable on the open ocean. What's good about these little ships is you could navigate them. You could you could use the wind to tack in and out of wind. It was a little bit more maneuverable than what the Chinese were trying to do. Uh, but yeah, it must have been scary. I mean, I've, I've been on a replica of the Columbus's ship. In Columbus, Ohio, they have a little replica you can go on to. And yeah, I saw you that. Know, yeah, I saw you know, that there. Something. I actually drove my Hudson automobile across the Hudson <laughs> River using my Magellan navigation. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So let's 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 let's, let's get into uh, so th th that that's the stage. You had the Silicon Valley of exploration going full steam, and everybody's like getting caught up in this this adventure, right? But the the big false news of that day, because nobody knew anything, right? They didn't know. No, they, they're, they're that's why they're called explorers. They didn't know. But there was one guy called Sir John Mandeville who didn't exist. He's a made up name. But he wrote a somebody wrote a book and named it after Sir John Mandeville and made a lot of money. And they in this this is John Mandeville went on all these worldwide explorations and he talked about everything you're going to find when you go out into the world. And everybody bought and read this book, including Columbus and these other explorers. Uh, and, and there was a lot of misinformation in this book. The the guy Obviously, only because because no one had, no one had been there and wrote about us. So he was just making stuff up. Right, he was just making stuff up. He actually did sail once to like South America, maybe. Right. No, so not, not not John Manderville. He wasn't even a person. Oh. Was oh, a made-up person. So John. Yeah. So let's, let's 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 get on. But he, that that was just to say there there is there is a lot of fake news going on even at that time where people are writing about ventures they never had. Ah, I, I see what you're saying. Well, Amerigo yeah. Vespucci was the one that actually only went to South America once, and he got everything named after him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's another story too. And it wasn't him who named it after himself. But let's let's get to Columbus. Okay, the problem with Columbus, and it's sort of the same problem George Washington has, right? He's, he's sort of become a char caricature of himself, sort of a cartoon version because of all our early education, right? I mean, we all learn about Columbus when we're in the third grade. And when the third grade, they sort of simplify things and turn him, in, turn, turn him into sort of a... a, a prototypical American, right? Someone who stood up to the church and stood up to the si the old science and said, you know, the earth is round and, um, you know, we can go east by going west and nobody believed him, but he fought for years and finally got someone to support him. None of that's true. I mean, the world 
at that time. The reason why it took him so long to get support for his voyages is because he was wrong and everybody knew he was wrong, right? He, one of the things that's funny, he was, he, he just, um, he was using the wrong units of measure, right? When they talk about a nautical mile, right? He thought that they were using, these maps were using the European nautical mile, when in fact they were using the Arabic nautical mile. So it's the same difference of us using the American system or the metric system, right? So when he used his system of measurement, he mismet, he underestimated the diameter, the, the diameter of the earth by 25%, which means he thought the earth was a lot smaller. And everybody knew since 2000 years ago with the Greeks, this, the Greeks 2000 years before Columbus figured out what the true diameter of the earth was. So everybody knew except Columbus. Um, and the other thing he missed, it wasn't even a miscalculation. According to the Bible, the earth is uh, seven parts earth to one part water. And it says that in the book of Ezra. And Columbus was a very religious man. And so he took the Bible as literal, which means if the earth is a lot smaller, right, then everybody knew it was. And there was a lot less water. He underestimated the amount of water by 60%. There would be no reason why he thought leaving Lisbon, Portugal to Japan was 2000 miles. In fact, it's like 12,000 miles or over 10,000 miles. It's, it's, it's very different. But everybody else knew it was 10,000 miles and they told him you can't make it. No ship is gonna go 10,000 miles without running out of food and you know and who knows what's going to happen on, on the open ocean so he he was he was wrong and there was no reason for him to be wrong because everybody knew the truth but he the reason columbus so he he was self-educated but he was very self-educated in a very selective way he only studied that stuff that supported his beliefs and he believed that he was called by God to usher in the end of the world. That he was going to get to China, right? And he thought the Khan was still the king of China. He was going to convert the Khan of China to Christianity. The Khan was going to take the gold of the East, go kill the Antichrist, who was the Muslims, and then take back Jerusalem for Christianity. And then Jesus would come back after that tribulation and rule the earth for a thousand years. And he actually believed that, right? And no amount of information that you could give him that didn't fit into that worldview, he wasn't gonna listen to, right? And so uh, most people at that time, Portugal, England, Italy, <laughs> you know, Germany, they all said, no, Columbus, it's not true. We know how big the earth is. But the only one who would listen to him was Isabella, <laughs> Ferdinand and Isabella, who were just as crazy as he was. And so they, they supported his, his, his trip and then off, off he went and found the new world. So oh. he was, so, so he, but he was a great navigator. He was just a terrible mathematician and a terrible geographer. And, they, and, but they he, really but he had a vision it, and he was gonna go for it. They really got it sorted out by the time Magellan came along because Magellan, Maybe that's why there was a Magellan navigation system and not a Columbus uh, navigation yeah, system. Yeah, no, I mean... Because on Magellan, when they finally got back, they understood that they were a day off. So after three years, they had took such great notes and stuff, they figured out that, the, you know, you got to add a day or subtract a day. Yeah, like I have a hard, a hard time figuring out what day it is, so I'm not doing anything. So, so, Saturday, so Sunday. what you're saying? I lose Columbus, days all the time. Columbus was a a Peter the Great character, kind of a religious zealot. But you know what? I think that's. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm sure that that's accurate. But I think that as he got older, and after the multiple voyages, and after he got his titles and stuff taken away, he started to go a little bit crazy. But at the end of the day, um. Christianity won 
because it's the year, you know, 2021. That's that's what, you know, 20, 2021. Look, we talked about calendars and stuff. So it's tax season. When you're doing your taxes, just write year of the ox. Just write, just draw an ox and see if that works. All right, sorry. Where were we? Yeah, I mean, yeah that, that's what that's why they 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 they, they don't use uh, uh, BC and AD anymore. They use uh, the common era uh, to, to to get away from that. But they but they still base it on that that break. You know that that what that event that happened two thousand years ago. So yeah, you still have these vestiges of, of Christianity. Even but I do have the, a, the, the a Chinese third, third constellations century. on my tie or the Chinese New Year's. So they've got yeah, the year yeah. of the ox, year of the Anyway, but yeah, don't <laughs> don't just write monkey for the year. It won't work. Or yeah. if you or if you do, if you do, let us know if that works. Try that. Yeah. I mean, if you go to other countries, they'll they'll, they'll put the uh, the Chinese year on there. I I thought that was amazing when you sit there and you go, this is year six thousand nine hundred and fifty two, and you go, wow, really? I slept too long. <laughs> it's like, I must I must have overslept. Yeah. All right, but 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 the problem. Okay, so Columbus did. He had the vision that the world was going to end, and that was the whole motivation of him going on this exploration. And the only way he could justify going east was if he totally miss miss or didn't listen to the scientific facts of the day. Right? Everybody knew he was wrong, but being wrong, he made a discovery. That's right. That's influenced everybody since then. Even though he never admitted that he discovered a new, a new, a new, a, a new continent, till till his dying day, he never admitted he. Because if he did, that would have gone against this whole belief system. You know, he 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 had, like he had gone down the rabbit hole. Right? I mean, even though Jesus never came, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Columbus was a nutbag. Um, I, I do want to tell that one story because I've heard it a couple different times. So Columbus went back and forth to the in East Indies um, several times. And on one of his voyages, he needed supplies and the natives didn't have enough to give him. And he predicted that a lunar eclipse was going to happen. And it did. And then the natives were so freaked out. They're like, oh my God, you got superpowers. Let me give you everything that we need. So he was a very clever, um, he was smart. He knew, asked, you know, about the stars and stuff. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, they knew about eclipses. The funny follow up on that story was that someone tried to do that later. And, and the, uh, the Indians let him do it. He goes, see, the sun has ate the moon. And, uh, or, or the, the, yeah, the moon is eating the sun, and if you don't give us what you want right away, it's going to be into the, the world. They give us what you want, and then the moon lets the sun free. And so he was trying to do that whole argument, and the Indian go, "We know about eclipses. <laughs> you 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 get away with that once, yeah, maybe fool, twice. Fool me but once, then you fool can't me you twice. can't keep using the same solar ellipse every every time. And 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 so they killed the guy and goes. You, but but they let him go through the whole ritual of, of 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 the moon eating the sun, and then they go, that that's very funny. We're gonna kill you anyways, uh, and and eat your bones. So yeah, that's well, that's a good ending to that. Um, <laughs> so these guys, well, one thing I just want to become clear is that yes, they were great navigators. They were, but you, what they never were, were great governors of the land that they supposedly you know that that's where they all they their interpersonal skills must have really sucked because there's when magellan was being massacred in the philippines by the natives his crew on his boat sat there and watched and they say oh we couldn't do anything our cannons were bullshit when your captain is getting killed you go out and try to save him that's all so Sorry there was that, there was some interpersonal problems that Magellan had. Yeah. And the other thing is with Henry Hudson, we don't know, but his crew hated him. And I don't know what went wrong there. Um, he was English, his crew was English. You can see how Magellan would have had trouble because he was Portugal and his crew was Spanish. 
but something happened with the Hudson's trip on that winter that they had to spend in the bay where they almost froze to death. They had had it with him. So these guys were great captains, great navigators, but they were not good governors and their interpersonal skills were lacking. Yeah, yeah to go back to Columbus, to go back to our Slavic heritage is that Columbus, before he went off to explore new worlds, his first job was as a slave trader. <laughs> but he didn't, he wasn't dealing in the African slave business. That wasn't even a thing right then. What he was, what he was participating in was in Slavic tr slave trade. And that's where the word slave comes from, is, is from Slavics, and we're Czechoslovakian. So the Portuguese side of us was was gathering the Slavic side of us and selling us to the Arabs. That's For how God's we sake. that's how we mixed. That's Some how we Portuguese mixed. married a Slav and then they created the Whitmores, but that's the English name. <laughs> well, yeah, how did that happen? <laughs> Where did the English come in? So, you know, and, and Columbus justified slavery biblically. I mean, the Bible has nothing bad to say about slavery, right? So he he sort of leveraged off that thing, the, the slavery. And so when he got to the New World, which was his most famous quote, right? If, if you read it, and he wrote it in his journal, he says, these natives are so Christ-like and so peaceful. They're like leading, they're living in the Garden of Eden, right? And because they're so peaceful and so kind, they are going to make great slaves, right? Because they obey us, right? They're not going to be like those Slavic people who are always trying to rebel. These people are going to be more compliant to, you know, their European overlords. And that was another, he, that was another thing he got wrong. Um, but that was probably something that we would have said at the time, but the Indians never did make good slaves. They, they just kind of died. They just kind of died off and then they yeah. had to go get the, Af and started the African slave trade to, to, to do their, uh, grow their sugar cane. <laughs> but the other thing is you could think of Magellan as the first person to create globalization, truly, you know, trade around the world. But Henry Hudson's claim to fame in, in my book, because I, I was always, uh, I always heard about the Hudson Bay Company in school with the trap, with the, what do you call the, the trappers that came, um, the yeah. uh, whatever. And fur, fur, fur traders, yeah. Fur yeah. traders, yeah. So, and that company, the Hudson Bay Company, which became kind of like the East India Company, these like huge companies that could, wage war um but anyway today that company still exists you yeah. can go to the hudsonbaycompany.com and order a, a beaver pelt no you can't order a beaver pelt but you can order stuff from tiffany's they own tiffany's so yeah, that yeah, company's yeah, been around yes. for like three or four hundred so, years yeah so that's what i'd like to i think it's a, it, that's an important point right and that's what i was trying to say about our three explorers right so Columbus was the old school religious fanatic going out to conquer the end of the world, bringing in the millennium, very focused on that. And Magellan was actually the true adventurer, the explorer. He was, I mean, there were better ways to get to the east than going west, right? They knew you could go around the Cape of Good Hope. You know, there's other ways of doing it. It wasn't, he didn't need to go, but the whole, I think he was the true explorer. Of the, he was doing it for for glory, you know, and for you know, in his sense of with, of the adventure and the knowledge. Uh, where you get to the English and the Dutch, man, it's not religious. No, nah. for sure. I mean, they were very they, religious. They were themselves. trying to find <laughs> Hudson was trying to find the northwest passage and then the northeast passage. But they were the doing northwest, it. For, never did were, find it. But they were doing it for purely business reason. They set yeah. up business so. And and so so it sort of split. The 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 South was conquistadors. They were out there for to conquer. The English and the Dutch were in it just for the business of it. They weren't into converting na natives to anything, right? They wanted to trade with them. They wanted to set up a business enterprise, but they weren't going to convert them to Calvinists or something or Methodists. They kind of left them alone in terms of whatever they believed. But they were they were trading with them and setting up a business enterprise. There was actually a name they called these people. They were called uh, commercial adventurists. Right? <laughs> That's a great title. I want to be a commercial 
adventurer. That's yeah, you know, I think instead of getting like an MBA, you could get a, a MCA, a Master of Commercial Adventurism. Well, right? the, the commercialism, the Colombian exchange, we just got to say that word, Colombian exchange, everything that went back and forth, mostly from my point of view, I think it was diseases that went east to west, although they do say that syphilis might have went west to east. Um, but there's it's it's the world that is that we live in now um the columbian exchange was that you know it is is probably the yeah, most yeah. important thing I don't, think, I don't think columbus can't be held responsible i mean it's named after him but i don't think he can be responsible for all the horrible things i mean he didn't intentionally bring diseases to the new world but no and he, the columbian and, exchange and, and, doesn't and, and, necessarily and, 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 have the, to the have the world a king right so it's like but what but he opened the door for other people to, like cortez and and bizarro they, they were the true evil ones it wasn't columbus right he wasn't going out to conquer anybody he was there to, he thought he was going to convert them right he thought i mean that's why i think he got upset was that he thought he was called by god to convert everybody like all he had to do was show up on their shore talk to them in spanish and they were all going to convert to Catholicism, and then Jesus was going to come back. And I think he he got disillusioned. Right. When, but you know he, what? When, when nobody did. Most, the most probably the happiest day of any human's life in the history of humans was the day that Columbus spotted land. Could you imagine that? Because in his mind, it was like everything, everything that I've been justified, justified, right? Yeah. And the yeah. other thing about you got to think about, like I said in the beginning, these guys were badass and they were brave. Columbus wrote in his journal, well, we haven't seen any monsters yet. They actually thought that there were monsters. So imagine that, putting that on top of everything else. Yeah, oh yeah, well, funny thing about that was, yeah, on the way there, right, he was writing, no monsters yet, no monsters yet. But on the way back, they started seeing monsters, right? They started seeing mermaids and all these fantastical figures. I figured they must have picked up some weed when they were in the New World. That's what they saw. Had more visions when they when they came when they came out. And they said and they saw I like they, I don't think you know what weed does, but you know what they did see manatee, and they thought that that was a mermaid. And I'm going, what the fuck? You th you're confusing a manatee for a mermaid. That's one ugly mermaid. I... <laughs> That's one ugly mermaid. Yeah. But they started seeing stuff. I don't know what they were taking, but they started seeing stuff. So the other thing interesting about Columbus, and we'll get off, I'll, stop, I'll get off his his case, was that I just think it's funny because I just learned about this now that he he had prayer meetings every day on the deck of his ship. Right? Can you imagine these poor sailors? Right? Every every day they have to go to a prayer meeting on the deck of the ship. And oh, then, the and then, of course, since since, since he's very literal uh, Old Testament type 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 religious fanatic. If you were gay, you got executed, right? And there's like 40 men on a ship that's only like 50. I'm, I'm surprised you had anybody left by the time you got to the new world. <laughs> it's killing everybody. That's so funny. I mean, who so, knew what was happening so after that were, meeting? If you were gay, you had to walk the plank. But after about uh, two weeks of those prayer meetings, I'd be like, oh, you know what? I'm gay. I was a deeply closeted gay sailor. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going off the plank. They see you later. I'm, I'm going to go make out with the manatee. All right, everybody. I sure appreciate everybody. In the comments, uh, please let us know if you choose, if you like Magellan, Columbus, or Henry Hudson better. Which was the more honorable um, guy for the age of exploration? And um, please hit subscribe and we'll be back real soon thank you everybody <laughs>